All right. Hey, we've got uh, Anthony here. Uh, Anthony's with Land Title. Uh, if you're picking up on a theme here with Land Title, there is a preference, right? Brenna works for Land Title, so I clearly have a bias, and that's okay. I tell everybody it was still my favorite title company before Brenna started working there. That's why we were encouraged uh, with her starting to work that direction. But uh, so interesting topic as this comes up often in questions. What is cryptocurrency in real estate? What uh, what does this do? Can I buy and sell property? What if my tenants want to pay in rent? Um, as a Buffalo Bills fan, our, uh, the Buffalo Bills backup quarterback tried to negotiate his new contract to be in cryptocurrency. I think he wanted Bitcoin. Um, so it, it's growing. There, there's a lot of cool things from what I know. And I will be transparent. I don't know much about cryptocurrency. Um, that's why I wanted to have this conversation with Anthony, because you are an expert and I have just kind of curiosities about it. Uh, and if I get a tenant that wants to start paying me a cryptocurrency, I'll probably learn more about it, uh, in a hurry as to what that looks like for me. But, uh, you know, for now, Anthony, introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and, uh, how you got to your position with land title. What, what exactly you do? Yeah, so it's a little bit of a long story, but not too bad, right? So I uh, I work at Land Title. I'm in the sales uh, sales as well. So I work out of the Boulder market, and a lot of this journey that kind of brought my crypto background and my real estate background together happened because of my position here in you know pretty major crypto hub across the nation, right? Boulder has a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of like startups, fun stuff like that. So it's a really big crypto hub, just like Denver is. Um, the state of Colorado is really pro blockchain in a lot of ways, which is kind of, it's kind of like the accounting system behind cryptocurrency or behind Bitcoin. And it, depending on, you know, which cryptocurrency you choose, it, there's, you know, one of the guys who owns Cardano lives in Broomfield. One of the guys that owns Zcash started in Boulder, right? Like there's a lot of these that have really started up in this area. So um, it, it's a really kind of, right place, right time on top of a lot of what I was doing in the past, right? I'm uh, just a computer geek from growing up back in the day. And me and my dad were building servers from the time I was very young. So when blockchain came around and we saw the opportunity to to mine Monero, it was really great. Like it was fun. It was more of a hobby than anything, to be completely honest. But one thing leads to another it spires out of control and you have 168 servers in your basement bedroom and you have a wind tunnel running through it to keep it cool just because <laughs> it's not great so that's all before i got into the blockchain and real estate space but that's like 2015 16 17. um 2018 rolls around in the first like really big bubble that we kind of saw they got a lot of media attention i mean we've there's been plenty in the history of bitcoin but um that's when really people started asking questions you know, some people bought, would buy around, you know, Bitcoin at $10 or $100 or $1,000. And next thing you know, they get a 10x, 100x return on their money. And they're like, wow, you know, I'm actually worth $5 million. And I live in a rental studio on Pearl Street. Like, what am I doing? Maybe I should buy a house. So that's kind of, I think, how everything sort of developed, right? Um, me being on the title side of things, people are just like, hey, is it possible, right? I have this client worth $10 million or $5 million or whatever, they should probably not just live in like a crappy studio that's $2,000 a month, but it's in a really cool spot. And uh, that's kind of where things landed. So about 2018, I started getting those questions, 2017, I guess, right? Um, we went through a bunch of stuff with our legal counsel land and they just kept humoring me, thank God. <laughs> but we got, you know, we, we got paperwork together. We got stuff where we could actually do some real estate deals lots of nuances which you and i can get into um about how they have to be done and you know that whole process but land really gave me kind of a platform to go out and speak on so in 2018 all i did was travel colorado to all the main real estate stages and talk about cryptocurrency and real estate and it was exciting because you know there's a lot going on big boom and um it was in the media all the time and so it was just a really good marketing tool more than anything else even though i knew a lot about it and i met a ton of cool people been on all these councils and spoken at a blockchain conference here in Boulder. And it's just been awesome. Like, I think I had that year in 2018, I had the class, they got a, over a thousand people across Colorado that were realtors attend the class. It was like the biggest class in Colorado at the time. Yeah. It was cool. Like it's just kind of fueled my career. And it's also just been like a fun hobby that integrated with, with work. So. 
Well, that's pretty cool, right? And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, right, nerding out at a young age, this was a hobby that, that just kind of developed into something that you've uh, really kind of continued down that rabbit hole. Uh, I, I joke, right? I was good at lifting heavy stuff and putting it back down. That doesn't equate to <laughs> cryptocurrency and, uh, you know, kind of why my hobbies went another direction. But uh, it's interesting to look at uh, where people predict the, the cryptocurrency is going, where it's at today and where it was uh, or not existing, right? E even just a short time ago. So um, one question, right? Have we in Colorado bought and sold or, or is somebody bought and sold closed a property using cryptocurrency as the currency, as the, as the exchange? Yeah, so cryptocurrency has been involved in a lot of transactions across Colorado. Um, whether they've been peer to peer transfer, you know, we've done a couple like that, but they're really few and far between. A lot of times down payment money was coming from cryptocurrency. Um, it, some of the local lenders and everybody have really figured out how to do that. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac actually made a rule to where if you could source where the funds had come from before they were Bitcoin or before they were whatever your crypto was, mm -hmm. that they were okay with the funds coming from that without seasoning in a bank or any of that other nonsense. So a lot of people have taken their earnings and they've really turned it into real estate assets. Um, I, I got involved with the CU Boulder cryptocurrency group at one time and they were all talking about all their different stuff they've done and all the money they made and like all those guys come out of college and they're like yeah it'd be really nice to have a place to live and they just like go take 30 grand and put it on a down payment on a condo right so a lot of that stuff's happened in colorado um keep in mind colorado's you know pro pro blockchain pro pro real estate um it, cryptocurrency is considered an asset class in colorado so being that it's an asset class it's not money so I think that's a big, clear di distinction between the two. Cryptocurrency in the entire United States is not qualified as money. It's not, you know, it's not the Chinese yen, which is definitely not classified as an asset. It's classified as some sort of currency, right? So being an asset that classifies it like real estate, it classifies it like a herd of cattle, right? They're assets. So when you buy these things, they're traded and done differently than, you know, if you were going to pay cash for a house. So it does create a lot of nuance with it. but. Yeah, we've done all kinds of fun stuff with currency or with crypto. So, yeah, very different because the uh, the U.S. dollar, right? This is going back to my my history nerd, right? In me, going back to school, was backed by the gold, right? For the dollars that were out, there was gold in the Federal Reserve to kind of back that through. It's no longer the case. It's not backed by gold. It's, it's not backed by anything. Uh, but cryptocurrency, not actually considered. By legal definition, I, I'm I'm guessing right, uh, uh, money, right? Yeah, exactly. It's an asset, and the whole reason for that, guess what? It revolves around taxes. It has nothing to do with anything else. <laughs> the government wanted their share here in the United States, and here we are, right? Largest economy in the world, probably the largest cryptocurrency holder in the world. It's really hard to tell that, but um, the majority of people in the United States that were involved in this the government was like, well, how in the world are we going to track this and collect tax revenue on it? It's, it's going to be really big. And so the Fed made a decision in like 2014 to declare it an asset class. So instead of just sweeping it under the rug like they were doing for years, it started getting big enough. They're like, OK, we got to take our piece. So that's entirely the reason. In Europe, it's not like that. But in the US, it is. So what uh, what are some of the challenges, I guess, when it comes to cryptocurrency and real estate um, just from a transaction status? So number one, the hardest thing to do is the smartest person in the room when it comes to cryptocurrency is always the buyer because they're the ones who hold the cryptocurrency. Sellers don't want your cryptocurrency 99.99% <laughs> of the time, right? So the biggest hurdle is maybe one educating them number two if it truly is going to be a let's call it bitcoin to bitcoin peer transfer then it would have to be paid off free and clear right because the bank doesn't want your bitcoin the bank wants dollars because that's what they lent they lent dollars if they lent yen they wouldn't want your dollars they'd want yen so <laughs> that currency exchange isn't quite as easy as trading you know yen for us dollars and paying off a loan we can't actually collect anything other than us dollars because we're a title company as a third party as a neutral third party and our you know rules in colorado we can't take your bitcoin so that leaves a bunch of nuance the hardest part being that lots of buyers would love to buy real estate with bitcoin 
very, very few sellers want it, right? The event, even if they say they'll take it, 99% of the time, they're just going to cash it out, make it US dollars. So a lot of times it hits a trading desk or it hits an exchange. It never actually goes to the seller in Bitcoin, right? It's going to go in dollars. Now, everyone likes to set records and, you know, hit the news and all this fancy stuff. So people do that stuff. If they're involved, it's more of like, you know, I could sell to you and we can make the headlines, the front page, or, you know, there are two buddies that are like, this has never been done before in the world. Let's do it. Or let never been done before in the United States. Um, that's a lot of stuff that you see hit the news, but I've talked to people from Fort Collins to Colorado Springs into the mountains. I mean, there was even a builder up in Vail Valley that was talking to me at one point because they were going to list every one of their new builds in like a big track development for Bitcoin. It's a hundred percent marketing thing for a lot of these companies. Wow, interesting piece, right? And as it as it comes down to uh, the actual closing, um, you know, I'll bet that not all of their homes are going to close in Bitcoin. Yeah, I for the doubt any of them close in Bitcoin. To be completely <laughs> honest, I think even if you attract a Bitcoin buyer, you're like you have to tax some fees on it, or you have to do something, or timing with exchanges, or you know, just the volatility alone is a big hurdle to overcome. Um, pretty much anyone that's closed in Bitcoin and had to like convince somebody to take it, there, there's not really a tax incentive for doing that either. That you know they're paying more than the asking price. So a lot of times, let's just say you know you want you made a ton of money in Bitcoin, you want to buy a five million dollar house in the city of Boulder. That's something that happens, right? I know people looking in that market right now, but at the end of the day, what they realize is it's just easier to sell payer capital gains and just pay cash for the house. So a lot of them kind of come to that conclusion. Um, the only reason a lot of people think that they could do this asset transfer, this peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin for a house kind of trade, is they don't think that it's going to hit them with with a tax taxable event, right? So because of an asset, but that's just not the case, right? The title company has to declare that that transfer of real estate took place and what the value of the home was, and the value of the home isn't a thousand Bitcoin or five hundred Bitcoin, right? It's $5 million. <laughs> so it does create a, it creates some headaches for people, but everyone seems to keep figuring it out. <laughs> well, and, and as people continue to go down that rabbit hole and continue to go, um, I, I guess, find where the, the law is not really clear or it's not really set, they're going to have to continue to find ways to make that happen as the consumers, as the public continue to grow, it grows in popularity and more people want to go down that path, that path, I'm assuming. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think there's very few companies that are doing this. Um, choose your partners very carefully if you're working Bitcoin transactions, uh, you know, whether you're the buyer or you're an agent out there watching this video. Um, there, we're probably the only title company in Colorado that can effectively and actually will insure it, right? Talk to underwriting, talk the whole bit. Um, I know a lot of the bigger title companies, a lot of the bigger banks, they really dislike it, right? There's a lot of risk involved with crypto. So, um, you know, there's a lot of disclosures that need to take place. Be careful what you're doing, obviously. Know what you're talking about before you take on a bunch of crypto. If you've, if you've never, you're like, oh, Bitcoin's at a record high. It's never been this high before, right? Or at least few days ago. It is it's all, all over the place all the time. But that's just not the right time to take on Bitcoin if you don't even know what it is. So you really have to kind of navigate this with some caution, do a ton of education. Like everyone want, that wants to dive down this rabbit hole, they just continue to navigate what's going on, learn more. Um, I think it's a great, great thing to know about, right? There's a lot of people that can really, you know, understand crypto they you know you can meet a lot of people it's a great networking tool uh, you know there's a lot of wealth in it right so wealth has fueled real estate for you know well basically since the dawn of civilization so i mean this is just one of those things that it's just another piece of the puzzle that we all get to learn and talk about and find out about together but i feel like every time i do a transaction or i work on a transaction in in the cryptocurrency space i'm constantly doing something different or learning about something new yeah, I'll bet. I'm assuming very similar to, uh, you know, the marijuana industry in Denver in particular, right? A lot of the laws were not really kind of set up and equipped. So what did the banks have to do when it came to the money? How did this work? And right, we're consistently pushing the envelope and it's evolving very fast from, again, from somebody that doesn't follow it, I don't nerd out on the cryptocurrency, but a conversation that comes up and, and people want to know, right? So, um, you know, let's let's find the answers to the solution. So, 
Absolutely. There's a ton of parallels. And they actually, you know, kind of started and came up through Colorado at the same amount, the same basic time, even though this is like the second time in two or three years that crypto has been huge in the news just because of the price increases. Crypto has been in the Colorado world for, you know, 2010, 2011, right? Like that the dawn of Bitcoin was in New York City, kind of. I mean, not really, but it's hard to tell where it actually took place. But a lot of the beginnings to the crypto space was in New York. But Denver is very shortly after. I mean, the hackathon that takes place here every year in Denver is the largest in the world. So okay. you get tons of computers and tons of engineers and tons of people in the Colorado space coming from all over the world every year to network and do all kinds of fun stuff. I'm assuming 2020 didn't happen and they had to do it virtually, but it is what it is. It's all fun. It kind of interesting that a, uh, a virtual currency, so to speak, has a annual get together physically where, where people are getting together, right? I'm telling you, nothing's more fun than to get together though. What, what's the best part of real estate? It's getting to like travel and meet people from across the country and, you know, networking in different areas. And that's the time you learn the most, right? Yeah. Yeah, we could do it over Zoom. It's just not the same. You can't share a beer over Zoom that easy. No, no, it's it's a little hard to cheer somebody from you know ac across the computer. It's uh, <laughs> you, you spill a little bit onto the the computer. Computers really don't like being wet. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now we've mentioned a lot about just cryptocurrency as a whole, uh, and Bitcoin is not the only one. So, what are some of the other prominent players, or some of the ones that are starting to peek around as it comes to? figuring out these transactions within real estate. Okay, well, number one, everyone talks about Bitcoin because Bitcoin's the biggest. And when I say the biggest, I'm actually gonna read this off of the screen just so I make sure this is correct. But um, Bitcoin right now is about four times larger than its nearest competitor. So the, the market cap for Bitcoin sits around $600 billion today, billion with a B, right? So it's effectively the fourth largest currency in the world by itself. The nearest cryptocurrency that even had that's in circulation is Ethereum. And Ethereum is a whole different beast, right? It's a whole different animal. And it's worth about $150 billion. That would also put it in the top 10 currencies of the world, right? So those two currencies alone, they make up 90, 95% of all cryptocurrency on the planet, or at least dollar volume wise, right? There's thousands and thousands of crypto projects, but those two are the king. And for a good reason, Bitcoin has one use case. It's very, very specific. It's very strict. All it does is transfer money peer to peer. So it's like the digital version of me handing you a hundred dollar bill. I hand you a hundred dollars in US dollars and you would know you have it. How do you know you have it? Cause you're holding it, right? Bitcoin, there's a computer algorithm that goes through pro all this processing power. And it says, I give you a hundred dollars, right? And it did a really good job of it. It's hyper secure. Then you have Ethereum who is the other half of the coin. And they realize that, well, if you can transfer money, well, why can't we transfer, I don't know, information or anything else? So the use case changed from the very first to, you know, other projects kind of took place, but Ethereum, Ethereum really took the cake as far as use case, the most kind of growth in the blockchain space. And Ethereum really is, you know, they're releasing Ethereum 2.0. They're really transitioning into application development and all the stuff that can be hosted on their platform. So you go from like a digital currency, which is bright, shiny and exciting to where I spend most of my time in the blockchain side of things, because the use case, not only for recording real estate ownership or, you know, transferring information like your healthcare records or whatever else is right. There's a lot of use cases for Ethereum. All that stuff can be built on, you know, the Ethereum network. And I think long term, even though Bitcoin may always be in the forefront of this, the world will adopt Ethereum, right? Or at least some other crypto that is in the same kind of realm because Ethereum just has the most traction right now. It's why it's the biggest, but there's really just so much use case for the blockchain space and everything happening there that you will see it in every facet of business in the next 10 years, guaranteed, right? It's already all over the place. Yeah, it's technology moves at such a rapid pace, right? And we think about this platform that we're on right now, this social media platform with Facebook. Uh, Facebook is less than 20 years old, right? right. And it has over 2 billion users on it. Um, you know, and then we look at things like the, the blockchain, the cryptocurrency, and how fast some of these things just become mainstream. It's hard to imagine life today without Facebook or without social media. And to think, 
gosh, it's not even been around for what, half of my life yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And blockchain's all of 12 years old, right? Bitcoin is the oldest. 2009 is kind of the start time. So mm -hmm. it's very much in its infancy. It, I mean, I think it's got some decent comparisons to the internet as a whole, just use case wise, right? It should revolutionize the way the entire world works. Just like Facebook has changed the way the entire world accesses information and does things, right? So all of these, all of these platforms are really changing everything we do at a revolutionary pace, which I mean, that's all I spend most of my time in the real estate business doing is just integrating technology and helping people adapt. And I mean, the one thing that the real estate world is behind on is just keeping up with the times because it's the most fractionalized industry on earth. Right. I mean, so, how many so tell me a little more about that, here? right? The, the fractionalized and why we're so behind, right? And you're, you're hurting my feelings being a real estate <laughs> agent, right? No, but it's, it's not just you. It's just a function of call it 50,000 people have a real estate license in the state of Colorado. You're all independent contractors. You're all being constantly sold stuff to, and there's just not, there's no conformity, right? Like if, if you were in a different country, for instance, at least real estate recording would be the same, but in the United States, real estate recording has 3000 counties doing it 3000 different ways. Some are in paper, some are on blockchain. Most of them are digital, but maybe two thirds, right? If you're in Canada, they're all in one system. There's one MLS. The realtors are all kind of uniform or unified. Um, it, it just the United States is in a really interesting place. You see this in a lot of places in the world where it, it's no fault to you know to you the business owner or even to the consumer, but platforms like Zillow exist because they created one entity for you to access information from, and because of that, they started controlling a lot of traffic. Right. Yeah. So this is where all of this technology starts to take place and. Cryptocurrency is no different, right? They're just going to be the accounting software behind, behind what the world's doing. Yeah, who knows? Right? It's going to look very, very different, you know, in another five, 10 years. Gosh, you know, by the time that my my young son is able to vote, who knows exactly what what uh, that currency is going to look like, right? I, I probably won't be able to hand him a $20 bill for washing my car. Like I remember uh, as a kid washing my parents' vehicles and <laughs> here's a $20 bill, right? Right. Yeah. And actually voting is a perfect example because when I was learning to teach on Ethereum, I was like, well, I better go learn how to program this if I'm going to understand the system. The very first example that MIST gives you is an example of creating a voting algorithm. And you can vote and record it on the blockchain and then there's zero disputing whether it's right or wrong. It just that's what it is. It, that's the one thing about computers, right? They're black and white. They're yes and no. There's no gray area, which right. is why I think that's why, you know, people have a hard time with the concepts because, well, what if this happens? Well, <laughs> it is or it isn't, right? There's just no, there's no, no choice there. Well, and, and you know, uh, people typically, right? This is just a human response. They have questions and fears just around things that are not familiar or they don't understand. And, you know, is as we ask good questions about, well, what if this happens, if there's good solutions for it, well, then I think it's something that can be moved forward with confidence. Doesn't mean it has to be moved forward and that's the, the standard currency tomorrow, um, you know, but people asking good questions and we look at the, the solutions to whatever potential problems are there. Absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna let you shamelessly plug. So you have a podcast, tell me about your podcast. I actually run two podcasts, but yes, one <laughs> on blockchain and real estate. Um, the one I the one I have on blockchain and real estate of a partner that we've done a lot of the stuff together. We actually spoke together on the Boulder Theater stage at a cryptocurrency conference, and we were like, "Why don't we talk more about this?" People always ask a lot of questions, uh, so we've been running this podcast for about two and a half years now. It's called Get Real with Blockchain. You can get it anywhere you find your podcasts. GetRealWithBlockchain.com, as you see down on the bottom of the screen, is our website for it. Um, we don't do a ton with it, right? We were doing about one episode a month there for a while. Last year, I think we only put out four or five episodes, but I don't like to bring out, we did a lot of interviews, right? We interviewed companies doing everything from, you know, recording real estate deeds to just anything that was real estate related in that realm in the blockchain space. Um, we talked to people that own currency. We talked to people that are consultants, people that are, you know, consulting with NAR. We talked to people about doing pretty much anything. It's just, if you really kind of want to get real nerdy with me 
in the blockchain space, it's a good place to get your feet wet. You know, we talk about cryptocurrency news. We talked about we talk about records being set and all kinds of people doing fun things. But more than anything, it's been a fun way to network, a fun way to get to know CEOs from all over the world doing blockchain and crypto space. And like the last person we had on was like a major asset manager. They have, you know, billions of dollars to spend on luxury assets across the globe. And we got on and talked to them because they were looking at stuff in Boulder, right? That's how I met them. So yeah. pretty interesting and fun that we could do that. Well, it's pretty interesting to just see where um, where everything is going, where, um, you know, the potential has for it. So sorry, I lost my light here. Must have uh, timed out or, or had some. So we, we just went dark, but uh, you know, no worries. I think we're towards the end of it anyhow. Um, and th this was great. It was interesting to have this conversation. Um, you know, for those that have been watching the live, make sure you drop a comment in. Let us know that you're here. If you're not catching it live, you can always catch this on our YouTube channel or our uh, business Facebook page, and you can check those out. Um, so, Anthony, Super Bowl here is two weeks away. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, right, as a uh, as a football fan, right? Who do you have for the Super Bowl? Well, I'll tell you who I wanted for the Super Bowl, and that was <laughs> Buffalo. Because I only bring that up because you brought him up earlier. Yes. If I didn't get my wish, I would imagine Casey takes the cake again. I'm, I'm pulling for Kansas City. I am a lifelong Buffalo Bills fan. Uh, it's been painful. It was good to see them play well. Would have been awesome to see them play better uh, against Kansas City. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling for KC here too. So I agree. I just think it's hard to beat. They're the best offense in the league. Yeah. Absolutely. Anthony, well, we'll thank you again so much. I appreciate the time. Would love to have you back on a, on a future um, live Facebook live here as we talk about cryptocurrency and just what's evolving. Um, so I'm going to just extend that invitation. Would love to have you back in the future. I would love to. We'll see you next time. All right. Awesome. Thanks everybody for tuning in.